name is Mark Prelo. I'm uh, Mark with a capital M on OSM, which for some reason capitalization matters. Um, I don't know why. Um, and I am, uh, as of three weeks ago, the executive director of Overture Maps. Um, and what I wanted to talk about, I, I, I have a very short amount of time. I won't be able to tell you what you want about Overture Maps or what I hope you want to know about it. What I really wanted to do is make a point, and that is that the goal here is expanding open map data. And I think that's really the goal that we should focus on. And I want to talk about how Overture, which I know is so sort of much shrouded in mystery, and OSM can work, which may also be shrouded in mystery, can work together on that. So that's really the goal of it. Um, one note about the presentation. I've been in a job for the last three and a half years where I didn't do many presentations. And so this is like the first one I've done, like a PowerPoint and all that. And I don't like to put a lot of words on the slide. So I usually like I put a picture that's sort of evocative of what I was trying to do. And I started doing it and I thought, I'm a modern person. It's 2023. I'm going to use generative AI. So I went on to Dolly and put my prompt in and got a picture. And they were horrible, but I didn't have much time. So I'm using them, but I gave you the prompt. And so if you get bored of my talk, you can evaluate whether the world is ready for AI, whether it's an existential world to humankind and all that. So, okay, so you will see that. Um, I know attribution on screen is important, so I did that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so what's our goal? Um, proliferation. A word about the AI. I thought proliferation, I thought rabbits. And so I put in prompt, over 50 rabbits who may be thinking about proliferation. Two things. I'm not sure if they meant, like, I meant a lot of rabbits. I'm not sure if they meant, like, middle-aged rabbits, like 50 in rabbit rabbits. And I don't know what that means in rabbit talk. So, so, um, so anyway, I, again, well, the, the, they don't get better. The pictures don't get better. Um, but the point that I love was, uh, I think our goal in open data is proliferation of open data. When OpenStreetMap started, the thing was about building open data that anyone could use. It could be could be freely used, freely edited, freely built. And 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 this organization, oh, sorry, this Alan, movement, this movement has built an amazing data set. Um, and 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 I think our goal, all of us who are here, doing what you're interested, in, should be to proliferate that. And when I say proliferation, I mean not just building data, but using data. And, and I say that very purposely because I think that um, building data is very important, obviously, but the way maps are being used today, the use of data informs what's changed in the world. And if you can feed that back, it informs what the map needs to change into. I would argue, and we'd be happy to at the break, um, that uh, the, the best maps are the maps that are used the most if you can capture that data and feed it back. And, and that's an important uh, concept. Um, that I'm going to go. Uh, this is my one slide without Dolly pictures on it, but this is actually taken from the website. And and I, website mission statements have a lot of people thinking and picking about all the words. But one of the things, like when we said overture, is we're going to power current and next generation maps. Implicit in that is the idea that what is required in mapping is changing. And I'm talking on the using side. If you think about the maps that you had or the app, the mapping applications you had 20 years ago, if you were alive then or 10 years ago, or now, and then project that, ask yourself, do you think those maps are gonna change? And every time I look at a map, every time I look at a location app, my brain is thinking what data was needed to make that. And I think if you think that way, you realize the data has fundamentally changed. And so one of the overtures things is, we wanna build map data that is gonna suit the needs of the market, suit the needs of the user. Second important thing is, who's it for? And we are building, Overture purposely for people who are building mapping applications. And that's different, um, I would say, because we're really looking at questions of not what does it take to easily build data, but what does it take to easily use data as well? And, and so that's a fundamental um, uh, part of the mission. The way we're doing that is um, sort of three main things. And, and I'll really quickly is one is leverage all sources of open data. This is an amazing source of community data. Um, but there are other ways to build open data. There's a lot of government open data that's out there that can be pulled in and used in a good way. And increasingly, we're seeing more and more uses of AI and using sensors that are out there applied to AI to generate data. And we're seeing people who are willing to do that and put that in the open. If you're a user of map data, you know, I'm sorry, they don't care where it comes from. They want the best data possible. And so one thing is, Use all sources of data. The other is, if you're going to use a lot of sources of data, you better have QA and conflation 
and the ability to validation. And uh, uh, Stephen Yunus, we were just talking about some of the work on daylight and validation. So that's a super important thing. And the third thing is it needs to be output in a format that um, the users want to use it in. They, and, and well, tagging is great on the building side. And I, I truly mean that it, it's a brilliant, I think, uh, a schema for if you're encouraging map building. It's a little less brilliant if you're trying to use data in a consistent, uh, a predictable way. So we're gonna put it out in a format tailored for users. And we're also gonna do another thing. We're gonna add a reference player to that that allows you to add data to it. And that's very important because in the olden days, maps were made of paper. And the only way to add data to a map was like with a felt pen, with a Sharpie. And then we got into the digital age and all your map data came from a map data supplier and you put on the map and showed it. But now starting like 2004, Four-ish when Google built mashups, the whole thing is about what you put on top of that. And I was listening to the government stuff. It's like, what is the stuff you're putting on that? So the key thing is map data needs to be combined with other data. And so that reference system is um, super key. Oh, my prompt was impression of painting of three important things. I don't get art. I don't know what to say. It's like, this is what, this is what it did. Okay. Why map data? I've told, I wasn't gonna put this slide in, but I told people to on this slide, I, I will. Um, there's, a, there's a paradigm called the, the monkey in the platform. And the monkey in the platform, and, and so one question people ask is, are you can build software, you can build this, you can build that. Why do we do map data? The monkey in the platform is a, a kind of thought experiment, which says, if your job is to build a monkey juggling flaming batons while standing on a tall platform, what is the first thing you do? And if you think about that, the right answer, is you find out if you can get a monkey to juggle flaming batons. And why? Because if you can do that, building the platform is pretty easy, right? And so the idea is like, when you think about a problem, what's the hard thing? And in mapping, as we all know, there's data and there's software. <clears throat> data is a monkey juggling and flaming batons. The, the software, and all due respect to people who design software, the software is hard, it's complicated, it's tricky, but you can do that with a few people in a couple of years. Map building takes thousands of people forever. And so one of the reasons Overture was founded was really go after the monkey in the platform. And I thought Dolly did a reasonable job. Um, so anyway. Okay. Um, the point I'd like to make is that OSM and OSM, I don't know what <laughs> I literally don't. I was just like, I don't know. Um, um, the, the, the point I, I, I would make is that um, I would I really believe, and I've, I've thought about this like way more than my wife thinks I should, um, that, that OpenStreetMap and o Overture Maps are, are in some ways insanely complementary. Um, and I think we could and should be thinking about how we support each other. One thing, and I added this first bullet literally as I was sitting in the uh, federal government pat panel, and it just occurred to me over and over as the people were speaking, that different perspectives lead to different priorities. And one of the great things I think that, that OSM has done is really allowed people with different priorities to map the things that are important to them. Um, Overture is built for map application data users. Their priorities may not be yours. In fact, I can, from being in this, the business for a while, I can almost guarantee you they're not. But that data, and I think this came up really well in that, in that panel, that data is important out there. And so I think the different perspectives will lead to different priorities. And I don't think mapping is a zero sum game. There's a lot of the world left to map. And you know what, when you get it mapped, it's gonna change and you're gonna have to map it again. So I think there's a big uh, piece. Second thing I think where they're complimentary is increased user. I hope, believe, truly believe that, um, that with Overture's focus on use, we will increase the usage of open map data. And I, I, I truly believe that if you increase the use of data, your data gets better. It only gets better if you use it more. That takes some work, doesn't happen automatically, but if you can feed that data back, you start to get better uh, ideas. Third thing, um, I believe Overture will create new sources of open data. Um, we, we, we've we already done some things of those. You saw some building heights, but we, we're gonna be looking at, um, you know, how do we use how do we use AI? How do we use computer vision? How do we use sensors? I think that will create open sources of open data that will be open. Um, it will be licensed in a way that can be imported to ODBL. Will it be imported to ODBL? I don't know. That's a question for for this community. I think. 
Um, we will build data pipelines. And I think that's interesting view that says now all of a sudden, if I don't have map data, but I have some other things, maybe I can feed it into that pipeline and, and build new types of map data. Um, validation and QA. And um, I think one area that we're starting to look at is, is there room between OSM and OSMF to collaborate on tooling? Um, Overture um, and OSM both have a high degree of interest in tooling, especially you know, for tooling for building data, for tooling for validating data, and for tooling to allow people to access and make use of data. And you know, the conversation that's happening in Overture is like, let's not reinvent the wheel. If we can come alongside some existing tooling and help with that or, 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 or work on that, be a great area of uh, collaboration. One of the things about the way Overture, I think, will build data is it will not necessarily be repeatable. In other words, the, the processes and input data that is required to make that data will not necessarily be freely. And I think this community should think about that, right? Because one of the big things is I see you put that data in, can I figure out if that data is correct? There could be cases where we're taking data, which is private data, putting it through processes, which are potentially private processes, and creating data, which then by decision is made open. I can tell you if it's open. I can tell you how we validated it and what we did it, but I can't necessarily give you the raw pieces to make that data again. So I think that's one of the things that this community uh, really should consider. Um, imports versus individual feature mapping. What I was trying to say there is if we create data, one of the things that I guess a lot is, are you going to systematically import that into OSM? And my answer is, no, not really. Um, it is available there, but I don't know what if that data should or would or if the community would like it uh, systematically imported. We're certainly not going to slam it in without, without concern. If we find things that are broken, we sure, certainly should fix them. But I think, again, that's another question. Um, alignment on tooling. I don't know why I put that in. I already had that on the first slide. Uh, and the other thing is just communication. One of the things, you know, when I talk to a lot of people is, um, we're new, we're fairly uh, 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 starting up. I will tell you that some of the things are being figured out as we go. Um, I really would love to maintain good communications because um, whatever you think, I don't think our intentions are terribly nefarious, um, but, but I think one of the things that we've talked, we've talked to um, the OSMF board and are trying to establish regular communications is the better the, better the communication, the less chance for miscommunication in a statement of the blindingly obvious. Um, Okay, that's uh, all I had, except for this. And, and I think that um, a comment I get, and, and it's sort of like a question I, I read behind questions I get a lot about Overture is, is Overture in some way meant as a lack of respect for OSM? And I would say, personally for me, emphatically no. And I would say that from an Overture perspective, not only do we have respect for the OSM product, the data it makes, but I think actually Overture um, has had a lot of respect and, it, and I would admit from a corporate standpoint, it's taken a while to get to this, for the, the OSM process of how they build data, how OSM builds data, what the values are, what the things that are important to. And in some ways, Overture is in a, a realization that, that actually you could break that if you tried to change it a lot to build um, what, what we might need. And so I really believe this idea of compatibility and um, working together is uh, super important. So uh, that's what I got. Um, here's every way you can get a hold of me. If you like me, email me. If you don't like me, reach out to me on MySpace. <laughs> if you're from Youth Mappers and don't know what, if you're from Youth Mappers and don't know what MySpace is, turn to an old person next to you and ask me. <laughs>